songs for the stars above. I'd like you all to warmly welcome our next speaker, Roxanne, who is a retired judge who has worked and lived in Indian country and seen the impacts of sacrifice zones created by our development of nuclear weapons. Um, they've worked for many years as an MBA, they worked as an MBA graduate and pers pursued renewable energy alternati alternatives to the pollution, destruction, and terror that nuclear weapons inflict on the planet. Roxanne also organizes with Code Pink's Divest from the War Machine campaign. Thank you, Roxanne. My name is Roxanne, and I'm an advocate for transgender women. But today I stand before you in solidarity with Code Pink. Code Pink is one of the very few organizations that stands up for trans women. And we have one member of my community that's sitting in federal prison right now exposing the horrors of our military complex. Say her name, Chelsea. So today I'm speaking on behalf of Code Pink and delivering their divestiture uh, plan and hope for you. So they call it divestiture. I say, use your money to support your values. We often feel powerless in the face of hate and oppression. We remain silent and let our government do awful, horrible things. Let's stop doing that. Code Pink has an outline of steps we can take this week to start change. There are four actions to do now and two easy steps to build the movement. Today we stand before the place that makes very evil weapons. The evil grew from two bombs to thousands of bombs, each a thousand times more powerful. Because we remain silent and let our government lie to us and make us hate each other. Let's start understanding this pattern that's used over and over to control us. I'm going to use two examples due to time constraints. First, the 1850s. In the 1850s, they made transgender women illegal. It was illegal for any of us to go out in public. Those laws were passed by San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, Santa Barbara, and, and cities all across the nation. My community is still being affected by those laws. Last night when I was going home, I live in San Jose, and I had to make sure that I avoided the police because otherwise I'd be sitting in jail right now instead of up here, and I'd much rather be here. I lived and worked on Indian reservations, and in the 1850s, Indians were slaves. Now I know our government lies to us all the time, they called them indentured servants. But it's the same thing. And in 1852, the governor of our state delivered the State of the State Address that said, it shall be a war of annihilation. They were going to annihilate the Native Americans right here in California. And they did. 96% genocide. And then we forget, in the 1850s, the immigrants that were despised then were the Germans and the Irish. Why? Because they were Catholics. And the dominant religion at that time was Protestants. So the Germans and Catholics were vilified for their religion. Does that sound familiar? Hatred and lies based on your appearance your religion, and the label of immigrant. Hate and lies gives us our nuclear horror that we have. Those two bombs were dropped on cities full of women and children. And the U.S. military told the public at that time that they were dropped on military bases. We now know that there was about a hundred military personnel killed in the second bomb, and eight of those were U.S. POWs. The rest were all women and children. The lies of national security, appearance of people, and immigrant status 
placed 120,000 of our friends and neighbors in concentration camps. Those Japanese concentration camps were placed inside of existing concentration camps. And I lived and worked at the site of the largest concentration camp, Poston. The conditions were absolutely horrible. The people were not even treated as human beings. They were rounded up here in the Bay Area and taken to a horse track and put in the stalls without them even being clean. They were then transported out to the desert. And the Mojave Desert is ruthless. In the summer, it's 130. In the winter, it's 30. And they put these people in tar paper shacks, built with two by twos, tar paper, and then little sticks of wood on the outside to keep the paper in place. Well, Mojave Wind laughed at that. So, the government still lies to us and they don't want it called concentration camps, but I'm going to read two items to you and you make your own determination. First is the plaque. The U.S. government burned the buildings out there to destroy it because it's embarrassing, but a Japanese businessman built an obelisk. And on the side of that, there's a plaque. And as I researched for today's speech, I realized that it's not on the internet. But I've stood there twice, read it, and memorized it, sort of. It says something to this effect. This was a camp surrounded by barbed wire with gun towers and searchlights. It was patrolled by the U.S. Army with machine guns and military equipment. Now, the other quote is a poem written by one of the prisoners, one of our citizens. The poem is titled, The Damn Fence. And I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm, there are portions I'll share with you. Posts deep in ground, wires all the way round, machine gun nests, sentries and soldiers everywhere were trapped like rats. Imprisoned though we committed no crime to be locked up in a concentration camp. To keep us pinned behind that damn fence is someone's notion of national defense. These were our neighbors and our friends. And most people stayed silent while they were carted away, afraid to even write to them. Today we have over 800 military bases around the world and we support 73% of the dictators. 73% take our arms and we support them. There are over 65 million people forcibly displaced. U.S. military interventions and U.S. produced weapons have played a leading role in displacing those millions of people. Our war on ta terror has created many of those. For instance, just in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan, we have displaced 10 million people. The U.S. war machine must be held accountable for its role in creating the global refugee crisis. And today, no one wants to talk about the proxy war that Ronald Reagan and Oliver North started and ran. El Salvador and Guatemala. We are responsible for those conditions that the people are now fleeing for and begging at our border. We need to remember that these people are being demonized because they're labeled immigrants and they look different than some of us. 
We spend $750 billion a year bombing and terrorizing people whose appearance is different than ours. And we're told that that is necessary for national defense. This huge waste of money and resources would be better spent here. Spending it at home creates up to 19 times the number of jobs per dollar spent and fixes our problems, not creating more of them. Stop being quiet when we're told concentration camps are necessary for national defense. So, the women of Code Pink have done all the work for you. This part gets easy. The website, even Joe Biden could say, is codepink.org. <laughs> so, if you go to that website, um, as I said, the forms are already there. The outlines of what I'm about to s s share with you are there. The first step, remember there's four steps now, two steps continuing is banking. Now this is something we can all do. We can make a commitment to use credit unions. Take the money away from the big banks that use their profits to oppose us and do things that we hate. And so the one website that you might have to remember is Weapons Free Funds. Org. All run together. Weapons free funds. You can go there and it will give you a list of investment funds for your retirement accounts and your investments so that we're not supporting the Boeing and the horrible GE and Westinghouse. All these companies that are making and contributing to the bombs and for years were the owners of NBC and CBS. Now you wonder why we don't know the true story? The second step is how you spend your money. So there, it's the four pillars that are used against us. Their profits are used against us. Big oil, industrial farms, big pharma, and the medical industry. We're asking that you divest. Two of those are gonna be easy. You have a choice where you buy your gasoline and how much gasoline you use. They may control the refineries, but if we buy from independents like Costco or whatever your choice is, then at least part of the profit is not going back to big oil to be used against us. Industrial farms, that's easy for us to address on our daily basis. We just need to change our diet to be more plant-based diet. Now, the last two are harder. I mean, our choices are to ask for generic uh, pharmaceuticals, or mail order, but it leads us to the third step. The third step is to write and call your con congressional representatives. Code Pink has a pledge that asks the rep politicians to not take money from the weapons companies. There's only three Three politicians in California have signed that. So go to CodePink.org, get the form, and raise some hell with your representative. And as we've already heard, I want to reiterate, we need to change the blue wall of silence. Our entrenched Democrats that are sitting there doing nothing. Zoe Lofgren is my representative. She's been in office since the start of time. She sits on the immigration uh, subcommittee. And I've asked her, point blank, how many trans women have to die, how many children have to die before you raise your finger and ask for uh, an investigation? Or you hold a hearing? She's the chairwoman. Nobody blocks her from doing that. We have three women from my community that walked 2,500 miles through Mexico. I don't know how they did it. That's scary as a trans woman to have to walk through that country. They survived. 
they get here to our border and our law enforcement murdered them. That is unconscionable and the children that are dying is unconscionable. It needs to change. We need to find our West Coast version of AOC. Are you out there? We need people that will fight for us, not be silent. The final step is to lobby your cities, counties, and college districts to divest also. The forms are all at code pink. So the two steps to continue this are to talk with your neighbors, friends, and family to find peaceful friends and share what you've learned here today and what you read at codepink.org. And then the second step is to vote. And vote for politicians that stand up to the government lies. Don't vote for the do-nothing Democrats. We need a California AOC. If you wish to join Code Pink, just go to divest at codepink.org and Maya will be in touch with you. In closing, I want to take this opportunity at the microphone to speak about my own community. As I said, we're still 100% unemployed. It's still illegal for us to walk down the street. We're still subject to police harassment. The California legislature employs zero trans women in Sacramento. The city of San Jose employs zero trans women. The County of Santa Clara has 23,000 employees and they have one token trans woman, not the 400 for proportional. So don't forget us. We are people. Don't judge us because of our appearance. Let's stop that moniker. So peace until we meet again. I would like to read two quotes. I had to go back to the car and get these. I cut my speech down to meet the time limit. But after listening to the other speakers, I wanted to share, if I can find them real quick, two quotes. The first one was General Omar Bradley on nuclear weapons. Ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. We know more about war than we know about peace, more about killing than we know about living. We have grasped the mystery of the atom and rejected the Sermon on the Mount. General Omar Bradley. The final one is a General Lee Butler. He was in charge of all of our nuclear weapons. He's retired now. His quote it is a measure of arrogance to assert that nuclear weapons free world is impossible when 95% of the nations of the world are already nuclear free. I think that a vast majority of people on the face of the earth will endorse the proposition that nuclear weapons have no place among us. There is no security in nuclear weapons. It is a fool's game. General Lee Butler, and he ran all the bombers and all these bombs that uh, Ellsberg just told us about. Thank you so much. Inside of the living room, I'm gonna stay